Today is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to our recorded worship for June 5th, Pentecost Sunday. I encourage you to take a look in your bulletins, uh, online bulletins, for updates on hospitalizations and health concerns. Uh, birthdays this coming week, uh, Sunday, today, Bronson Reedy, Monday, John Elser, Wednesday, Larry Nauer and Katie Laudenslager, and Saturday, Jim Mortsall. And now we begin our recorded worship by singing hymn number 582, Holy Spirit Ever Dwelling, verses 1 and 3. for praise through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God now and forever Amen. Amen our first reading is from the second chapter of Acts before Jesus ascended into heaven he told his disciples they would be filled with the Holy Spirit now amid signs of fire wind and a variety of languages the people were amazed and astonished at Jesus' promise coming true. The lesson reads, When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other language as the Spirit gave them the ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, 
for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from the 8th chapter of Romans. Here Paul speaks about the mystery of baptism. Through the Holy Spirit we are claimed, gathered, and welcomed into Christ's body, the church. And we receive a new name in our adoption, child of God. St. Paul writes, For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be, be to, God. to God. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 14th chapter. Glory to Glory you, to you Lord. O Lord. Though the disciples struggle with Jesus' nature and identity, they receive the promise that they too will be identified with God and God's mission. Though he must leave them now, Jesus promises the coming of the Advocate, whom God will send to comfort and enlighten them. The Gospel speaks. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, but if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And, if, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, to you O Christ. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable and suitable in your sight, O God, our rock, our strength, and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Well, happy birthday, everybody. You know, today is Pentecost Sunday. It's the day that we celebrate the launching of Christ's church in the world. You know, the term Pentecost, well, it comes from the Greek word Pentecostus, meaning 50th, from which one of the most important feasts of the Jewish calendar derives its name. That is, 50 days after Passover, Jews celebrated the Feast of Harvest, or Feast of Weeks. It celebrated the spring harvest and the giving of the law to Moses on Mount Sinai. And what we read about in our first reading from Acts, well, Luke describes the events that take place on the first Pentecost after Jesus' death, resurrection, 
and ascension. And now being observant Jews, some roughly 120 followers of Jesus had gathered in Jerusalem to celebrate the Jewish Pentecost, or Shabbat in Hebrew. Because Jewish Pentecost, well, it became one of the great pilgrimage feasts of Judaism. Luke describes how God-fearing Jews from every nation of the world had converged on Jerusalem for worship. Now, since about the second century, Christians have celebrated the coming of the Holy Spirit 50 days after the death and resurrection of Jesus on this Jewish feast of Pentecost because with the descent of the Spirit that we read about in Acts, the Church of Christ was launched. And after Christmas and Easter, Pentecost marks the most important celebration of the Christian calendar. And it's an incredible birth story, unlike any other. It's full of wild happenings, tongues of fire, rushing winds, speaking in other languages, accusations of drunkenness. It seems that 50 days after Jesus' resurrection, God shows up to throw one unforgettable party. And if tongues of fire weren't strange enough, the 120 believers began to speak in other languages such, as, such that all the multitude had come to Jerusalem, heard them speaking in their own native language. Now Luke lists at least 15 different languages. Maybe there were more. Perhaps folks could understand a language other than their own. In any event, all heard and understood the good news in Christ Jesus that the disciples were sharing. And some 3,000 in the crowd repented were baptized and became followers of Christ. It's a very powerful story. One that many have suggested is the reversal of Babel. You remember the Old Testament story from Genesis? They built a tower to heaven in which God divided and scattered human communities by multiplying their languages to confuse them because they were defying God's command to fill the earth. And thus, they were working against God's desire that they be caretakers of all the earth and all its creatures. But you know, in reality, Pentecost is not the reversal of Babel, or Babel as you may pronounce it. In fact, when the Holy Spirit came, she didn't restore humanity to that common language. Rather, she declared all languages equally worthy of God's stories. So what we see is God weaving diversity and inclusiveness into the very fabric of the church. And so we are called as the people of God to be both the one and the many. Indeed, Jesus at his ascension back in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, he tells the crowd, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And so the gift of the Holy Spirit is neither for our benefit or for the Jews gathered in Jerusalem on that first Pentecost. Rather, it is for the benefit of God's mission to all the world. And so the purpose of the Holy Spirit is not to produce the speaking in tongues that some modern Christians seek, where their incoherent babbling is incomprehensible by others. Rather, the purpose of the Holy Spirit is to enable the followers of Christ to communicate the good news of Christ Jesus to others in ways that foster understanding and inclusion. You see, the story of Pentecost is compelling because it continues to speak to our current existence. You know, as you know, we live in a world where words are often used as toxic weapons. The language of our cherished isms, well, they threaten to divide and destroy us. The troubles of our day are global, existential, and catastrophic. And yet, our instinct is to retreat into our political or social enclaves, to only speak the language of those with whom we agree, to castigate those who are different or advocate for things that we just don't like. So folks, it's no small thing that the Holy Spirit loose tongues to break down barriers on the birthday of the church. You see, in the face of differences, God compelled his people 
to engage, to move closer, listen, linger, and speak in ways that foster understanding, appreciation, and connection. As followers of Christ, we are called to live in the spirit of our baptism, the community of the spirit that at its best celebrates and then transcends barriers of language and race and social stratification, ethnicity, gender, economics, and yes, politics. A diversity without division, a unity without uniformity. These are the hallmarks of spirit-driven Christian community that heals the curse of Babel. It is this unity in the spirit of Jesus that teaches about our gospel reading from John today. Answering Philip's demand to show them the Father, well, Jesus impatiently tells Philip that he is the physical, human manifestation of the Father, sent to be their advocate to show them what God is like. And as he continues in his farewell discourse to his disciples, Jesus describes his unity with the Father and the Father with him. In short, Jesus' oneness with the Father allows us to see in God the Son what God the Father is like and wants us to do. And what we see in Jesus throughout the Gospels is a God who sides with the weak, the oppressed, and the suffering. A God who speaks out for social and economic justice. A God who includes all, particularly those whom society excludes. You know, here on Pentecost Sunday, we celebrate the fulfillment of Jesus' promise to send the Holy Spirit to be our advocate in teaching us everything about discipleship and reminding us all, uh, reminding us of all that Jesus taught so that we might be partners in God's redemptive mission for the world. Oh Lord, send your Spirit onto us so that we too may speak the language of love and inclusion reflecting the light of Christ in all that we do and say. May we be fueled by the power of the Spirit to break down barriers, dropping our defenses to hear the stories of those who are different or with whom we disagree or dislike. May we hear the stories of others and speak their language, promoting both diversity and unity. May we be voices for the voiceless and strength for the weak. Make us one with you, God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as foot soldiers in your redemptive mission through Christ, setting us on fire for the healing of the world. Let us this day celebrate the sending of the Holy Spirit and the birthday of Christ Church. Because that, my friends, is the good news in Christ Jesus for us today and every day. And so now may the peace that surpasses our human understanding keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. And let all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Holy living one, holy moving one, First open our locked doors and by your spirit drive us out into the world, proclaiming your mighty deeds. Direct our words and actions, trusting the advocate abiding in and among us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Feed and care for creatures that remain hidden to us, yet contribute to the vibrancy of your creation. Train us to interact with creation from a place of wonder, awe, and reverence. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, Hear our prayer. Send your spirit to places where language is a barrier to justice and mercy for those who seek it. Bless the work of translators, interpreters, and teachers. Promote understanding for the sake of those longing for true freedom and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. Comfort all who live in constant fear or any who are suffering. Especially this day, we pray for those on our prayer list. And all those we name before you now silently in our hearts. Remind them that your spirit has made them your children 
and that they are never far from your glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Guide all bishops, pastors, missionaries, and other ministers of the gospel. Foster our relationships with partner synods and local ministry partners, that our visions and actions are spirit-led. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Keep our graduates in your constant care as they embark on the next phase of their lives. Teach them your ways and fill them with an unquenchable desire to learn your word. Give them a compassionate spirit and the wisdom to look beyond outward appearances to the heart within. We pray that you will surround them with friends and leaders who would challenge them to press closer to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Gather your peoples across regions, nations, and lands. Root our common life in the life, death, and resurrection of Christ. And by your spirit, bind us together with all the saints who have gone before us. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. In your spirit, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Now let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed be, be your name. name. Your, your kingdom come, come, your will be done on earth, earth as, as in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us today our, our daily bread. bread. Forgive us our, our sins as we forgive, forgive those who sin against us. us. Save, Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the, for the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And now receive God's blessing. God, the author of life, Christ, the life-giving, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Amen. And now we conclude our worship with the singing of hymn number 400, God of Tempest, God of Whirlwind, verses 1 and 5. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. To God.